Hello? Okay, hey, what's up? I can hear you. Hey, I can hear you perfectly too. Is there an echo? Awesome. I do not hear an echo. All right, awesome. Hey, great to meet you. Thank you. Yeah, great to meet you. What do you prefer to be called, by the way? Can I go by Chess Scholar oh, or... You can call me Matt. That's Matt, fine. okay, perfect. All right. Yeah. All right, I'm Jamie. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. All right, so do you want to link me your account, your OP.GG? Uh, yeah, I, it's just my name, Chess Scholar. Oh, wait. Oh, okay. Yeah, Sorry, I crack it open. I change it. Put, uh, Twisted Chess. Oh, okay. fancy. Twisted Chess two words. <laughs> Okay, um... This is true, Matt. I agree. <laughs> Alright. All Matt players are low elo. <laughs> Matt is a, uh... He's a jungler I played with in Collegiate. Yeah, he would uh, not. <laughs> um, what's up, Matt? Alright, so... You play a lot of normal games. Very interesting. Yeah. I'm excited um, to see you play. I've been doing a lot of, uh... Testing out with different mythics. I'm actually doing a little series on YouTube right now. Every mythic, Twisted Fate. Okay, so interesting. And so I'm guessing you understand the different mythics. I'm sorry. Yeah, and so I'm guessing you've seen the uh, like the Triforce Twisted Fate, who's running Lethal Tempo right now. Yeah, one of my Have favorites is actually the uh, Blood, um, the Cringebow one. Mm. I don't know why. Something very interesting. Cringebow, about it. yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. Very interesting. So give me a background on just like who you are as a league player. Like, um... uh, as a league player, very casual. I hop on maybe every other day or so, just play with my girlfriend. Uh, okay. We we want to climb every once in a while, but then there's just certain areas of the game I want to make sure I'm doing right or something to work at. Um, as okay. a chess coach, I'm I'm oh. always looking to find ways to improve in a regiment way. Okay, that's awesome. So I'm assuming you have a pretty big background in chess, which is cool. Yeah. I really like working with people who've like competed in, in something else, you know, whether it's a mm -hmm. video game or a sport, because it's like, you get the process. Now it's just, yeah. you know, <laughs> filling in the blanks. Process is the same stuff. Yeah. Um, go ahead and queue up for me. I keep talking. Sure. Yeah, all right, let's see. Um, okay. a normal game or? Whatever you're comfortable with. Okay, it and doesn't matter. I used to tell people solo queue, um, but if you play mostly normals right now and that's what you're comfortable with, that's okay as well. Well, I, if it's, uh, most people take more seriously as solo queue, then I guess that's a good way to get a good gauge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, that's generally what, what I used to say, but I, I kind of changed my rhetoric because if, if you're kind of a new player and your goal is champion mastery and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. it's fine to do it in normals. Um, okay. but in terms of like, yeah, we will want to get into rank eventually. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, yeah, the very first thing I'm noticing is there's just, like, not very many games played. Um, okay. So that's probably, like, the first... Oh, last season you played a decent amount. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I've been putting a lot of focus on chess this past year. Okay, got you. Yeah, you played... Oh, you played a decent amount in 2010 as well. Mm -hmm. Um, but nothing crazy. Yeah, so I would say... You know, if you can find time to play one or two games a night, like that would be perfect. Okay. Right now, it looks like you're playing once a weekend, maybe. <laughs> like, I don't, it looks rough. <laughs> um, so we're saying this guy's basically me, same-ish, different. What does that even mean? <laughs> we're this stuff down. Yeah. Do this every day. We got some good TF stuff. Yeah. So yeah, if you can play once or twice a day, it just it helps with actually having good information to go off of. League, there's so many variables uh, out, like outside of your control. A lot of the games that happen to you, happen to you, and you don't have a lot of control over them. So playing more games lets you kind of find the common denominators that, and filter out kind of what's noise and, and what are you doing from game to game. Okay. Um, yeah, so the, the rank system, all of League requires, since it's a team game, but we play in solo queue, it just requires a large sample size of game. Uh -huh. So... It's very accurate if you give it a large sample size, but over the, a, a small amount of games, like, you, you know, you have 27 ranked games right now. Who knows if that's accurate or not? <laughs> you, you could have just gotten some really unfortunate games or whatever. Yeah, it, it's like I said before, it seems to typically stem from, maybe it is my middle game understanding, uh, but I just seem to fall off after 25, 30 minutes. Okay, so yeah, talk to me more about that. You mean against everybody uh, and you just don't know what to do or against the opposing team um if there's one or two that are pretty strong not necessarily fed just like 
strong. Um, right. I can't seem to go in on my own, obviously. Twisted Fate's more, at least in my understanding, mm -hmm. is uh, more of a control mage, work together with everyone else. Yeah, I wouldn't call him a control mage because it's a really big defining factor that's super different between what you are and a control mage. Control okay. mages really like these nice front to back fights where am I sharing my screen? Let me share my screen. Yeah. Um I'm watching on stream, but yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um control mages like these front to back fights and they like to stay mid lane and they like to be very central, where okay. you like flanking and you hate standing on top of your teammates and you love side laning and basically you work to out rotate people rather than kind of out team fight people, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So your champion in the mid game, like a control mage would kind of want to sit mid. And if the fight's happening mid, kind of, you know, if one team's here and one team's here, a control mage is going to want to stand in these circles. Where you, you're going to want to find ways to kind of come in on these arrows like this and just stay away from these circles. Because if you're in these circles, you can't do your job. You're, you're a facilitator, which is accurate, but you're not really a control mage. Okay. Um, because you don't have like the space control. That a control mage has right you, you can't throw your oriana ball and just cut off a choke point right, right. <laughs> you can't you can't drop your victor w and now they can't walk through something and now your adc is safe you have to kind of set up picks and you have to kind of throw throw yellow cards at whoever you can dive on the back line that kind of thing mm -hmm. um, um oh, i'm sorry go ahead uh, i was just gonna mention that my girlfriend she's uh been in platinum a couple times oh, okay nice yeah, she's gotta catch mostly up. support. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> exactly, I gotta catch up. Uh, and actually, she's got hit up in the chest. Um, <laughs> she told me I need to really start reading a lot more about everything about what the champions do, how long cooldowns work. Okay. Uh, she says my understanding of other champions is uh, quite low. Okay. So beautiful. That's a thing that. Playing one champion will help you a lot with. I know it sounds kind of backwards. Playing one champion helps you learn other champions. But uh -huh. if you play this champion a lot, you'll get kind of the gameplay and the mechanics of this champion locked down. You'll be able to kind of use your mental stack on other champions. Okay. Um. Uh, real quick. Um. Sorry. Uh, which runes should I go for? I've been doing a lot of this. Uh... Can you share your screen for me? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um. We do a lot of attack speed with the fate recently, but uh, okay. if I should switch to I would the go correct. standard for this okay. first one. Okay. I understand how to play the standard to an extent. <laughs> okay. Oh um, fizz I typically ban. Alright, yeah, fizz is a fine ban. I mean I don't think it's technically optimal because I think there are much worse matchups, but really bans are personal. You just ban whatever you don't like. Okay, Hawkshun as well, but what can you do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm sorry uh, to interrupt you. What were you saying? Let's see. Um, Here, let me see where we're at in the game. Okay. I was just going to mention some notes on, on cooldowns, but I'll get back to it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, one um, watching a lot of Nisa's videos, one particular that got me was uh, he was saying, calm down, calm down to someone else. Mm -hmm. uh, the their skills are not infinite and i think that happens to me where i get overly uh, <laughs> anxious about what they are capable of <laughs> okay um so there's a couple of properties of cooldowns which i think are important cooldowns cost i, I have a couple of lectures i want to go through and kind of decide which one is sure, most yeah. valuable to you um but the first thing to recognize is cooldowns are like chess pieces in a way in that they cost resources there's an opportunity cost for them and one of the most fundamental properties of lane phase is, is cooldown advantage if you're up a cooldown it's very common you can leverage that into a lead if you're up a cooldown you can trade down cooldowns until you know you have the final one and you have to kill them that way so Thinking about cooldowns as pieces is very, very valuable. Okay. Um, I'm going to mention timing cooldowns in a little bit. Okay. Um, let's see, it looks like we're into brand. So at the moment, I would normally choose MR because it's a brand mid lane. It yeah. Seems. Yep. And, but with the entire comp, I feel like maybe eight. Uh, just take it for lane. 
It's fine. Okay. You can itemize against the other resistances if you have to. Okay, I see. Um, but yeah, I think these runes are fine. I usually take eyeball collection. Yeah, I was feeling that too. <laughs> yeah. It, some of these are preference as well. Okay. Like, if you want to start Seapot, you should go Time Warp Tonic. But if you start something else, that's fine. Okay. I typically start Dorn's Ring. Okay. Um, let's see. I haven't done the Mage version in a while. <laughs> Yeah, and there's kind of two different mage versions. Have you played the spellbook version? What the fuck, dude? I'm blind. <laughs> this is crazy. This is like this this brightness, this contrast, maybe. Uh, should I turn it down? No, it's fine. It's fine. This is like back in the original Dota days, people would do this so you'd see the spells better. <laughs> but I, don't, I don't think it actually matters anymore. Oh man. Uh, that's funny. So wait, you started W? Uh, for the gold card, just in case. Okay, so just hold your hold your spell. Okay. If it's ever like a just in case, because E is better if you end up not using it for an invade or anything. Okay. So just hold it and then level it up as whatever. Okay, is it better in terms of the laning phase for farming or poking? Both. Yeah, you get okay. to weave in more autos on the wave, so you get to push for Pryo easier. And if he steps up, you get to weave in more autos and trade, trade harder. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Um, in some matchups, if you're completely outranged, W is okay, because you can kind of poke with red card. Okay. But in a matchup where you can kind of fight for Pryo and win level 1, then E is just pretty much better. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. I'm all reading your chat. Thanks, Sor. <laughs> <laughs> Doing Twitch streaming myself, I'm like used to it. <laughs> okay, interesting. <laughs> um, yeah, so yeah. All right, and usually I'll take notes as you play, and then I'll kind of lecture on them after. I kind of okay. like to just let you play it. Oh my goodness, you got so much money there. Right, <laughs> I got lucky with the. Yeah, beautiful, beautiful rolls. Right? Seriously, it's, it's satisfying. Positive. <laughs> oh, this one. I right, Bolin gets a kill. Huge. Yeah, it doesn't feel great if we get pushed in level one. Okay. Because we don't get a great up. Okay. Thing. I also feel like every movement counts right now because yeah it's it's a little bit <laughs> stressful when people especially if it's the first time so just try not to worry about it too much it's it is okay. what it is i don't give a fuck if you win or lose i'm here to just kind of ah. see what you think and how you use your spells and how you react okay it's really bad if he hits you and the wave with his pillar ability so just okay don't stand on the wave okay stand off to the side now it's kind of cursed because we got poked a couple of times. More careful here, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see, right there, super scary if he hits you as well. So just stay off the wave and that can't, can't happen. Okay. Yeah, Should I, I back? Yeah, or... I think you have to. Okay. It's always better to have a bad wave than a bad death and then a bad wave. That's a little tricky. Oh right. my goodness, that's so sad. Uh... Oof. He can hurt. <laughs> so when you say curse, I, I guess there's something I don't know about brand. Uh, when I said this is cursed, that was oh, just, just a meme. me saying this was doomed. Yeah, it's it's a bit yeah. rough, bit of rough uh, situation. Um, I know that just this go, is one of my... Go dark seal, go dark seal boots and run fast. Oh my goodness, okay. go so fast, run. <laughs> go on, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> so that's, that's something you should do kind of put like while you're backing, thinking about what you want to buy. Gotcha. Uh, and just add it up. Dark Seal, super solid at zero stacks. Um, let's see. Where's C Pot? He didn't take Tower. He did not take Tower Tonic. Usually TFs will take Tower Tonic and then start C Pot, but we'll we'll talk about all that stuff after. 
Okay, thank you. I'll do my best not to talk over you too. Sorry. No, you're good, man. You're good. You're playing. You can just talk all you want. I'm taking notes on anything significant, so like. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I'm forgetting that I have a materializer now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, we want to get our ward down. So after we kill this minion, walk bottom and just place it. I would place it on their chickens. Okay. And you see Sejuani on the dragon, so super important to always kind of feel connected to your jungler. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> needing to respect him a little bit or maybe i'm over respecting i don't know <laughs> yeah we i mean he doesn't have any items you're actually stronger than him right now so you can look to pressure him a little bit just don't okay. stand on the wave stand more to the side okay now is this champion specific uh no it, it's kind of a fundamental idea that you don't want to get hit by their spell and have your wave get hit but see you get prio here which is good okay that ward's really shit Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's fine. We we have lots of stuff to talk about, so Okay, I mean, good. I'm glad. Don't worry about it. Yeah, so I, I I think the rest of this lesson is gonna be a lot of lecturing and then maybe a couple one v ones. Okay, thank you. Oh. Okay, so now with ult, I think about roaming. Yep. Um you kind of want to re up on resources, so if you can kind of Find a way to get a reset into your okay. alt. Super, super good. Okay. Yeah, I throw my blue card more here. I meant to throw a blue earlier. But it came out gold. Yep, it's a little bit rough, but yeah, if you can get this under, you can get just back right away. I uh, just back right now. Just back. Oh no, he gets us with the stun. Oh, it's so sad. Oh, well. <laughs> okay, so you can, what's their team? Who's their jungler? Okay, Merc Chad's suck here, actually. So boots are very important right now? Boots are strong, but I would just go, no, no, I would go alternator if I were you. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Should I ult to lane or just kind of walk? Um, no, nah. no. Oh. You, your first ult is super, super important on this champion. If you can ult the lane with your jungler there, it's super good. But it really, you're looking to get a kill or two off your ult. If you don't, you're really behind for the whole game. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I chose not to flash because I felt like I was going to die anyway. Okay. If you flash his stun, you, you could have done that. But that would have been fast reactions. Okay. That's, uh, that's okay. Hashtag mechanically weak. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, okay, this is so scary. They are going to come mid, so just walk top. Okay. Walk top, okay. Yep, and then you you just walk up in the river here. Uh, see if that crab is there. You can take that if you want. Just stun it first. Stun. Yep. Nice. And then you can go right back mid. I never thought of taking crab here. Interesting. Yeah, it's not usually very good, but since it's the small crab and you take it fast with your stun... And their whole team was bottom, so I didn't want you to show mid. Beautiful. Very good. Okay, that flash. Dude, uh -huh. you are... What are you scared of? He was dead. It's 2v1. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got it. Okay, so we see Mordekaiser. Oops, that was bad farming. Yeah, that worked. Okay, this is this is gonna be fun. I'm excited. Right. I'm excited for the lex or for just the, the discussion after. Um, am I doing anything pretty good or? Uh, yeah, your last setting I think is strong for your level. I think okay. your alt was very very good. A very good rec like oh recall 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 recall. Okay. 
Uh, I sh should probably recall here, right? Yeah, it's a little bit late now. You should stay. Okay. <laughs> He's like, Got it. Chaz, I think last one's better than me. Okay, come on, guys. That's a ban. That's <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous. I was playing a bunch hey. of TF the other day for Soar, and yeah, I was, I was struggling. I watch a uh, nice. swag a lot. Okay, now we so go. The first six matter. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know Olaf here. Okay, you can kind of buy whatever you want. I would buy tier two boots plus amp tome. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, I would go pen here. Oh, it's too late. Uh, sork pen, like sork boots. Oh, I see what you're saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, merch reds are good, uh, but I don't think they are this game. <laughs> merch reds are super good into like assassins and verse mages, where if you don't get one shot, you kind of win. But mm -hmm. Brand is going to burn through it pretty easily, and they don't have a lot of MR or CC on their team, so. Got it. They're kind of Thank low you. value overall. Okay, so you know he's top, so lean bottom. Lean. When you say yeah. lean, like just kind of hover this way. Yeah, lean. exactly. Exactly. Okay. And when I shove, walk down? Yep, exactly. And then you can just walk bottom, and if they're still diving, you can go there. If not, whatever. Yep. Oh, so you can oh. just kind of walk back mid. <laughs> Leona. <laughs> Yeah, poor Leona. She got executed. <laughs> oh, that's good, at least. Oh, ah. Nope, oh, that's fine. Just shove him under. He loses a lot here. Such yeah. a bad back by him. Is so, there a time where you want them to back like that? Uh, yeah, that's good for you. Because now you get to shove and you get to walk straight top. So, walk top, walk top. Don't show, don't show. Walk top. Okay, okay, okay. No, shove, got it. Okay, I'll basic show. Can I ult ignite and everything? Uh, I wouldn't ult. You don't okay. need it. I'm walking into him. Yep. I think he might just be out of here. I think he went in that bush. To the right. Maybe not though. That's okay. Yeah, whatever. That that's good hovering. It's good practice. Okay. Chat saying leaning is the most OP trick on TF. Chat, here's a secret. Leaning is the most OP trick, period. <laughs> it it lets you apply lots of pressure while staying safer from the gank. Oh wow, my Q does a lot of damage. Yeah, yep. Oh, I just barely dodged that. Nice. This blue card. Yep, beautiful. Nice. We stayed off the minion wave. Good progress. Trying. It's a little tricky. <laughs> okay, just let this come into you. You can't really stop him. Okay. And just make sure you watch bottom because he might walk bottom. Watching. Thank you. Ah! Um, yeah, I think that alt is not good. Yeah, that's ah, really that's not good, but that's okay. PC if I wanted to. Hmm. Not bad. Uh, I, I was clicking very frantically there. Too, yeah, actually. that play was already over uh, my time. We kind of went to it, but that's okay. okay. Um, bum, 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 bum. dude, I'm so excited. I, I think <laughs> we, we have lots of fun stuff to talk uh, about. I'm glad I'm going to have something to work towards. Yeah, we're going to have some strong ideas. I feel like, um, yeah, we're going to do some 1v1s as well. Have you practice some concepts? This guy is really crushing. Yeah, this game is... <laughs> a little bit rough that's okay yeah. it's a valuable game that's what i say about these ones okay <laughs> may not be a good one but it's, it's for sure is valuable um the comment you made earlier about my cs being decent yeah uh, back I, in the back in the time when like you saw my history when i was playing a lot mm -hmm. i used to wake up every day and practice for about 30 minutes just the first that's 10 minutes beautiful okay that is beautiful i, I wish people would do that more like i um I, I tell people just do it as a warm up and it's so easy. But, uh. Yo, Exothi, what's going on, man? <laughs> JS hairline better than Wally's hairline. Is that toxic? Oh, that's bad. Oh. Oh, and Wally's in here. We got a bunch of famous coaches in here. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Yeah, we got some interesting ideas to talk about. Okay, many brands. <laughs> Wait, yeah. does he have. He does. Okay. That is something that is, I think. Yeah, I wish people would do more. I tell that's a super common mistake I see in kind of 
this elo is people just don't last it well right they don't manipulate the wave well but you seem pretty confident I, with um, it. should i wait to buy so dark seal no or... no it, it's just i would hold on to the items you have get oblivion maybe oblivion no nah, it kind of sucks on you you don't have a lot of healing right, i'll just wait a minute <sighs> While he is backseat coaching you? Okay, good to know. We're so, getting backseat coached. Maybe I should play the bot lane a little bit since they're somewhat fed? Yeah. Uh, okay. A lot about TF is kind of paying attention to your jungler and paying attention to your waves and the side lanes and kind of syncing up your roams when, when they're trying to make plays. Okay. I feel like I wasn't playing very aggressive against Brand. Yeah, we were not. Okay. Um, We want to find ways to get priority when we're looking to roam. All right, this looks like we're about to all walk in. Oh, Sejuani stopped. Wow, oh my goodness. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's so doomed. All right, that, that alt was a bit <laughs> cursed, but that's okay. <laughs> Make it interesting to, like, hope I can get out of his way. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. Oh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Um, <laughs> holy smokes we got we got woo, okay <laughs> all right <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, uh i'm assuming a lot of my problems come from not playing enough <laughs> yeah that it definitely is eggs off yeah i appreciate the follow playing a lot will help but it looks to me like we don't have a good foundation so even if we played a lot i feel like we might not know what to improve on so i'm gonna okay. give you a lot of fundamental keys to laning as mid lane, a lot of fundamental keys to Twisted Fate, and then as you play more, you, you can definitely work and look at those. Okay. Um, right now, we look very, like, directionless. That makes sense. Okay, here you just want to get into a side lane. Get the fuck out of mid. Oh, mid I see is so bad. Yeah, oh, that's okay. This is okay. Yeah, I'm not in love with that. So. I tried to get my Ignite sooner, but it didn't work. Something happened in that fight that I mentioned before we even started that I said you will not like, or your champion won't at least. Uh-oh. Any guesses? Something I won't like. Yeah, that, that your champion's not very good at. We kind of want to avoid. Had to do with the... Uh, I don't have... No, the fucking Oblivion Orb's useless. It... It's the front to back stuff. We stood on top of our team and we just can't play that fight. We have to get out of mid and we have to avoid playing fights like that. Well, that's why you say go to side lane. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So I, I'm hoping for create some pressure on another side of the board. Yeah. So side lining does a couple of things for TF. It lets you have people come to you and usually you can out rotate them with your ultimate and you know, you can create a man advantage for the fight. It also lets you come into fights the way you want to come into them. It lets you flank, it lets you yellow card whoever you want to yellow card, rather than kind of sitting on your team like that fight. Did not did not look very good. Um, is this because we're behind? Is this because of composition or just that's, that's a that's a TF identity issue. Gotcha. Okay. So that is that is a, a champion identity thing. Champion identity is kind of the key to climbing in league. Um, you know, if you have this champion, just being able to know, you know. There's, I guess there's a couple of things that go into champion identity. There's like the matchup knowledge. There's the mechanics, right? Being able to pick the right card at the right time. Um, okay. But the biggest thing is just knowing what your job is within each each game and each situation. And just being able to ask yourself, did I do my job? Here you're doing your job. Olaf's coming to kill you though. I saw him. Yeah, so I would, I would have left if I were you by now. Just, okay, never mind. You can clear this wave. Oh, Actually, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, and while we're split pushing, we always have to look mid to see if there's if we can collapse into it. But I already used my ult. Yeah, I would go back because you have no mana now. And that's yeah. This is when I don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> this game's happy. already so far over. I, I don't really care. Uh, Leech Bane. Leech Bane kind of blows second. I would go RFC if I were you. Rapid Fire Gunner. Yeah, I mean, Lich Bane's okay some games if you're, like, the main source of magic damage, but... Also... Okay, are we... Okay, yeah, we'll just have... Let's talk about...
Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do there. Oh. I'm dead. Okay. Oof. That's rough. <clears throat> right. Deep breaths. Deep breaths. <laughs> uh, roll. So do you have any... Uh, have you played any other games at a high level or anything other than chess? Just chess. Um, I guess... I mean, I'm on the top 50 list for uh, speedrunning Super Mario RPG. Oh, that's sick, actually. That is so cool. But that's the only other thing competitively I can think of. Yeah. Okay. Um. I also did... Uh, oh, uh, sorry. Back in college, I was doing uh, Smash Bros. Melee. Okay. In, in Florida, I was top Dude, 200, I think. Fighter players just really enjoy TF, I guess. That's weird. <laughs> that's i don't really have a lot of experience playing those kind of games but that's interesting have you ever played on melee or no no i've never really? played i've never played melee i've never played any of like i've never played a fighting game in general more of a, gotcha. uh, more of a world of warcraft starcraft kind of guy should Blizzard i still be in side lane you should be but this game is over like i don't it okay. doesn't actually matter i would hit yes if i were you okay <laughs> Alrighty. okay Oh gosh. Yep. <laughs> oh, hello everybody. Okay. All right. Let's let's get started. I'm I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. So we're just gonna start from the top and go to the bottom, and we're gonna talk about um, the very first thing I want to talk about is your runes and your build path. So talk to me about kind of the runes you would take normally, the runes you decided to take, um, and why you built what you built. Make sure I got stuff open. Good question. Um, the Mord, Olaf, Brand, Kate, not. So, have you ever played Spellbook? I guess is one of my questions. Oh, Spellbook. Long time Brian. ago. Okay. Uh, it seemed personally, it seemed underwhelming, but I okay. kind of understand it's. Yeah, I think Electrocute is fine. Ability. A lot of the value, especially in your Elo, a lot of the value of Spellbook is in matchups where you know nobody's going to die, but if you're playing in this Elo, like people are going to die so electrocute's fine okay. um but i would shift show me your rune page again oh, sure, sure. Yeah. i okay. do like uh resolve runes as a secondary personally okay yeah Re resolve is super strong play. secondary right okay. in terms of sustain it's it's the strongest tree but what i would start doing I I uh, this is this is my typical one. Oh my goodness that's crazy um what i would start doing is i would start taking time warp tonic which is in the light blue tree so okay. rather than uh, cosmic insight, on the I bottom line. Um, time warp. Oh wait, time warp. Time warp. Time yeah, it's on the bottom of that page. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So time warp tonic. So you know you're going light blue secondary. I would take time warp tonic, and you can start corrupting potion. And the point of that is it gives you a bunch of effective uh, each HP and mana. It lets you trade okay. a lot more, and it lets you be a lot more proactive. It lets you start corrupting potion. That's that's what it does. Um, and corrupting potion is very valuable for, for frequent trading. Um, it's also very good on TF because you auto a lot and it makes your auto or it makes you do a lot more damage on each instance of damage in the trade while it's ticking. So it's very, very strong in this champion. So, um, here, first thing I'm gonna write down, I'm sharing my screen by the way, so you can see kind of what I'm writing, mm -hmm. what I'm looking at. Yeah, I'm just kind um, of around here. <laughs> time warp tonic, I would start taking this either second day. So, if you're going electrocute. And then you go inspiration second. I would just take the second. Um, I would just go electrocute like 99% of the games if I were you. Um, otherwise, spellbook is fine into matchups where you don't think you're going to kill them, but still, you go time warp tonic. Um, and then, yeah, and then green secondary feels great. Okay. Um, in terms of the build, I think Everfrost is just a lot better. And then for your second item, like Lich Bane is good if you're your main source of damage, right? It is good, good damage if you're uh, whatever. Uh, RFC, Rapid Fire Cannon is good setup, right? So if you're flanking well and you're setting up your carries well, if you're a very strong jungler, I would just go RFC Cannon. This website is called Pro Builds. If you're ever curious about a champion, what they build, what they run in certain matchups, I would just look up Pro Builds and then the champion. Okay. And you can see you know, Faker, Faker, you know, these kind of players. You can see what they take yeah. and when. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see it's mostly Spellbook for these guys because 
again, there's not a lot of deaths in those matchups. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you still see some Electrocute, and you see it's mostly Everfrost. Like, 99% Everfrost. Like it's 97% Everfrost. Everfrost is so strong. You can see, okay. see somebody between the, let's see, one and a half second root and okay. yellow card, which stands for how long? Okay. Was it like a second? Like, you see, uh, see somebody for years. Okay. Um, <laughs> like, it, it's so valuable. And then you see RFC second is very, very common. So, okay. yeah, I, that, that's just things I would think about. I'd build Everfrost way more, and I would go RFC second more often. Lich Bane is good, especially if you have kill pressure and you're trying to snowball through kills. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Runes and builds. That's kind of the preliminary stuff. All right. Okay. <laughs> now we're getting into fundamental game ideas. I okay. kind of want to talk about how we approach cooldowns. Here, let me open up the VOD because I think it'll help to kind of look at what I was seeing. So in terms of like timing cooldowns and stuff, mm -hmm. it's not okay. important to know the exact length of a cooldown, but I generally say there's three types of cooldowns. You have short cooldowns, you have medium cooldowns, and you have long cooldowns. Okay. And short cooldowns are like really, really tiny. These are things that are like under two seconds. <laughs> Okay. These are things that are like um, Oriana Ball, Syndra Q. Um, there's a couple other ones that I'm not thinking of right now, but these are really, really short ones. Medium mm -hmm. ones are, I guess we'll do long ones because these are more intuitive. Long ones are like 12 plus seconds. Mm -hmm. These are any like super hard CCs, uh, super fundamental trading abilities. Just anything that's like a really strong fundamental ability is going to be a long cooldown. So this is stuff okay. like ZW, Biz E, mm -hmm. um, any super strong CC, right? Zoe Bubble. So these kind of have like properties, I guess. So like I'll just write CC, super strong, <laughs> mobility, whatever. Right? Yeah. So um, I'm guessing Lux has pretty like S tier ish <laughs> cooldowns. <laughs> yeah, her, her cooldowns are relatively low. Um, but, and then medium is anything in between. These are like most commonly, these are like your average, like normal trading abilities, okay. normal trading skills, um, stuff like that. So as long as you kind of have a feeling and, and these are going to be around 10 seconds, okay. uh, give or take one or two seconds either way. So it's important that you just, and you can tell based off of the type of cooldown it is. And as long as you know, it's one of these things, you kind of start to gain a feeling for the opportunity you have, right? Okay. If you see Ari use her Q, you'll know that you'll have around 10 seconds where if she uses her charm, you know, you'll have like 12 to 14, right? Okay. Um, same thing with, uh, I don't know, who are we playing against last game? You know, if we're playing against Brand and he uses his pillar, you know, it'll be a medium cooldown, right? Just based off what it is. Okay. Um, if you're playing against Oriana or somebody who just has a cooldown they can use all the time, this is still a resource. And if they use this, you'll still be up a, a piece this will be up uh, a cooldown for two seconds, but you know, it's much shorter, obviously. So, and you can also think as, uh, of auto attacks as cooldowns a little bit. This is kind of more advanced, but that is something you can kind of think about. And auto attacks typically have, you know, a second cooldown or so, usually a little bit longer if they're a mage. Um, and these are all opportunities you can look to punish people on when they use these. And then, so yeah. So I know you mentioned like kind of trying to think about timing abilities and stuff. You don't need to know, like nobody actually actively times things. It's mostly feeling based. And this is how you learn it. You just, the type of spell will give you like roughly how long the spell is. Is it, uh, so I need to feel out which abilities are the, um, the ones yeah. I need to be most aware of. Yeah, exactly. Like right. The ones you and, know. Okay, got it. Okay. And in matchups you don't know, you can kind of just ask yourself like, what is the spell and chances are you know like i don't know what's a chance and, you know maybe you're thinking about leblanc and you're like well i wonder what her q cooldown is like uh -huh. it's probably a medium cooldown because i like, guess yeah it's a pretty common trading cool it's probably even a little bit lower than your average right um so that kind of thing okay um you know if you're playing against an assassin you're like i wonder how long uh, a Kali donut is yeah it's probably a really fucking long time because it's a ridiculously <laughs> loaded spell right so 
yeah, that's that's just kind of what I want to do to or talk about to address your first thing. Okay. The second thing is cooldowns are resources. And if you're ahead of cooldown, it's kind of like being ahead of chess piece and you should look to capitalize on it. Kind of no matter what it is. Right? Ah, uh, okay, like initiative. Got it. Yeah, exactly. Right. Okay. If they and this is why I added in auto attack, because at the high level, if you spend an auto attack on the wave, I'm gonna spend an auto attack on you. Right? Like that's a kind of a very rudimentary way to look at it right if you spend your wave here or if you spend an ability here and i'm up an ability i'm gonna look to leverage it into a lead somehow i'm either gonna zone you off the wave and i'm gonna be up income or i'm gonna use it on you and you're gonna be down resources whatever right okay so now, i'm sorry no go ahead i was just gonna ask uh twisted fates w is directly connected to his auto attack so mm -hmm. i have to understand that i'm in a in a way one ability short well, uh, your E, e. Yeah, your E is also connected to your auto attack. Right. But these are still cooldowns. Okay. Uh, the difference between like a good twisted fate and a and an, an amazing twisted fate is an amazing mm -hmm. twisted fate knows when his E is going to proc and he uses uh -huh. to trade with it. Um, okay. So yeah, these are these are these act just like normal cooldowns. Okay. Uh, abilities are just like cooldowns as well. Um or sorry, auto attack. So they act just like normal cooldowns. Okay. And that feel helped uh will improve as i play more consistently yeah okay yeah um thank you and now let's kind of look at how this applies to the beginning of lane phase here just take us to the very beginning yeah, so i know sometimes it seems i say what you're saying but no yeah that's that's good <laughs> yep, that's good active listening i love it yeah. um let's see And if you can rephrase it, especially since this is being streamed and stuff, like chances are it helps somebody too. So that, that's okay. that's just being a good student at that point. I feel like <laughs> you should know. All right. <laughs> so bum, 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 bum. a lot of lane phase is just battling for, it's battling for priority and it's battling for the amount of space you can take up, right? Okay. So if we kind of come into this and you let him just shove you under, he just kind of gains space and we don't get a good opportunity to use our ward. We don't get a good opportunity to do anything. He gets kind of priority to leave. He gets, um, he kind of wins in every sense, right? Okay. So let's just see what happens. Oh yeah, first thing I wanted to mention is this first minion that walks up, uh -huh. this one, if you just auto it twice, you'll never have to worry about the minions dying at like the same time again. So, oh, okay. Yeah, it is, it's called layering um okay so you can kind of layer the minions so they don't die all at the same time mm -hmm. but yeah just auto the first one twice if Thank you're playing you a champion I, i've been getting confused I, thanks for clarifying that because i got confused watching uh, yeah was a faker i think a long time ago the opponent hit one auto and he says he's lost yeah like, yeah what <laughs> um so <laughs> yeah what happens at the high level it's it, it's okay, fun so but, about that. yeah but yeah so some of that some of that is unique but yeah just okay. hit, hit this twice uh, if you're okay. playing a champion with higher attack damage you can just hit it once but yeah, pf or any mage just hit it twice okay. if you don't they'll all die at around the same time and you have to use a spell to last hit with them um so yeah auto first minion twice um okay another thing about cooldowns right we're talking about them as kind of these things that have value and they have costs, right? That's mostly what I've been focusing on. Um, but they also have value when you use them, right? You can use, you, you can get more value or less value out of the thing that is a cooldown. Mm -hmm. um, we usually talk about cooldown efficiency and very roughly, it's just how many things you hit, right? Okay. So brands W, right? It's, just, it's this big pillar, you know, it's just a circle. If he's able to hit these back minions and you, well, he wins in resources, he wins in prio, he gets the push on you. That is like the most efficient spell possible, okay. right? If you're standing here and he casts his W and he misses it and he hits nothing and he used his mana and he used his cooldown and now you have 10 seconds to punish that cooldown, that's like the least efficient cooldown. Okay. Right. So this came up a lot this game because you kept getting hit by his abilities. He was getting, <laughs> he was going to use very efficient cooldowns but we were also using our spells very inefficiently, right? Okay. If we're like using our Q, yeah, right, anything, yeah. right? If we're using our Q to shove the wave, 
we should try to hit every little thing because if we're not, it's inefficient. Right. right. And, and sometimes you'd only hit like two minions with your Q. And it's like, at that point, don't cast Q. It's not worth oh. the timer and the mana you use isn't worth the efficiency you're getting out of it. Right. The threat of the okay. spell is much higher. Like, Holding that piece is much higher than just casting it out and not having that piece anymore, and you only get to hit two things with it. Cool. Okay, right. that's interesting. Yeah, cool. so... Uh, yeah. I got a big smile on my face right now. Okay. Efficiency. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I, I thought this stuff would be exciting. I, I think um, cooldowns are fascinating, and I think the more you think about them as, like, things, it helps you kind of... Visual See how he hits fucking five things? That's like, wow, that's an efficient cooldown. Um... But now you're up a cooldown. So what should you do? You're up one to zero cooldowns. Well, first of all, you just cast your cooldown right away, which is like a little bit monka. But okay. <laughs> uh, theoretically, what's the best play here now that you're up a cooldown? I can probably go after him. Probably. Yeah, you can just zone him off. Okay. You say, fuck you, man. If you step up to last at these minions, I'm going to use my spell on you. You may be up wave prio, right? You may be up prio, but I'm not going to give you everything. I'm going to be up HP, right? Or... Okay. Or he's not going to step up. He's going to respect your cooldown. And then you just keep holding on to it. And then you guys are kind of just even. Because you get to even out the wave and, and last at the wave and stuff. Oh, I get it. Oh my gosh. Is that why when people use an ability, you see the shift in their location in regards to the wave? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Okay. Because it oh, kind of wow. it impacts the amount of space you get to take up. And how confidently. Yeah. So you have much more threat than him. Right? You have much more potential energy, I guess. Um... <laughs> Casting your spell right now, though, it just shatters all that potential. Mm -hmm. And now all he has to do is respect the cooldown, which he just steps back. You cast it on the wave, and now you guys are completely even, and he's winning here because he was more efficient with the spell. Right? He hit more things. You only hit three things. He hit the whole wave except one. Right? right. So now, yeah. And now we're behind simply because he used the spell more efficiently. Um, and yeah, now we have to step back a little bit. And see kind of how this goes. Um, and again, we just throw our cooldown in his face. Boom, we hit three things. He hits four things. We're getting destroyed. Right? So, yeah, this is this is really bad. The easiest way to avoid you getting hit here is just like don't stand on the wave. It's usually okay. a good rule of thumb. If his spell is a circle like this, you kind of just have to stay this radius away from the wave. So... Like, this area is out of bounds for you. That's kind of just how you think about it. Mm -hmm. Stand out here. Um, is there a... I'm sorry. Where you lean to is... It kind of depends on your vision and your jungler. And leaning is something that I wanted to mention as well. Um, which I guess I'll just get into. Uh, okay. I know the idea of, like, leaning towards your ward. Yeah. So, we can kind of imagine mid as just cut in two and there's kind of these these, these six pockets as well so these pockets are really nice to stand into like if you know their jungler is right here you just stand in one of these two pockets and if he walks up this way you just walk up into this pocket and you're actually safer than if you walk this way right okay because you just create so much more distance right so yeah these pockets and being able to lean in these pockets is very important kind of the rules are Number one is you lean away. Well, no, you lean towards vision, number one. Okay. Yep. So if you have good vision, do that. Um, number two is away from, like, enemy. So usually if their team's on the map, that just means away from their jungler. Um, but it can mean the support of the top laner. Enemy. And then number three is, like, towards your jungler. Like, this is kind of the priority list. Towards your jungle. Um, so, uh, what's a good example here? You know, you can't stand here. I mean, in this situation, this wave's coming at you. You should just kind of let it come to you and then play off the bounce wave. But let's say on the next wave, let's go forward a wave. Yeah. Here again, we know we can't stand on the wave here. Where do we stand? Well, our jungler's pathing top. Ideally, we just pop a ward over here. You know, you can just pop it over this wall or pop it in pixel or in this bush, whatever. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter. They're all fine. I'm dumb. I, and, I don't even think of that. And then that, that unlocks these pockets for you. And okay. boom, now you can just stay really safe to the gank. And you get to apply more pressure because you get to stand closer to him. And his cooldowns can't be as efficient. Oh. 
super super strong so yeah I, I have a saying about leaning so these are the rules to leaning and i say if you can lean lean as hard as you can because <laughs> okay. it's just it, it's so powerful mj style <laughs> <laughs> and here let me let me make sure i'm writing some of this stuff down um cooldowns think about efficiency think about um resources your jungle is having that's interesting okay costs I love lean. Okay, that's enough. That's enough of Twitch chat. <laughs> if you can lean, lean as hard as you can. Um, number one is towards vision. Rule number two is away from enemy. Number three is towards jungle. Towards our jungle. Okay. Um. Yeah, they have costs. My I might be pushing a little bit in this question. Um, if I notice my laner put vision in a certain area, but it happens to be an area I put vision in too. Sure. Do I still lean in that same direction? Yeah. Okay. Because, I mean, they may also lean there, but you guys may just handshake this pocket, right? And so you guys okay. can both lean here. You're not going to get hit by his weird W shit, and he's not going to get hit by your fucking yellow card, right? Or red yeah, card. They, they waste resources. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. So yeah. Um. The so cooldowns they have cost, resources, and the actual cooldown. Um, efficiency, and getting value out of it. We talked about leaning, about the build stuff. I'm gonna kind of mark this as like fundamental ideas. That I kind of wanted to introduce. Um. Let's see, let me read some more of these notes. We talked about layering, we talked about cooldowns. Get out of base fast. This is just like a small note, just get out of base, yeah. man. Like, yeah. <laughs> staying there is really bad. You just lose tempo, you lose time, you lose... Oh, tempo? That's a chess term, isn't it? Yep. Okay, yeah, that's usually a confusing term for new players, but I think... Mm -hmm. no, um, you're very knowledgeable in chess, I could tell. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a solid 900 rate. Yeah, I'm very... I'm very only you understand the terms and what they <laughs> Um... But yeah, so tempo is just, yeah, the, the kind of efficiency of your actions and whatever. Um, feeling connected to your jungler. This is another fundamental of League. You know, I, I say that mid to jungle is kind of like support to ADC mm -hmm. in that whenever we want to make things happen, we have to make it happen with our jungle. Right? We, if we're going to make a roam bottom, we have to hope, or we have to make it around our jungler pathing bottom. Right? If we're going to gank, we gank on our strong side. We gank on the side our jungler's at. Um, things like that. It, it's a very similar thing to support to ADC. The support okay. can only go make plays along with the ADC. The support can't roam unless, you know, the ADC is taken care of. The support can't make plays unless the ADC can follow up on it. It's the same exact thing as a mid laner. Right? Mm -hmm. So we just constantly, constantly, constantly have to know what our jungler is doing, where they're going, um, that kind of thing. In that vein, I kind of wanted to talk about strong side versus weak side. Okay. Have you heard, I mean, I'm sure you've heard these terms, but do you know what they mean? Strong, weak side. Mm, actually, I don't think I've ever even heard that before. Okay. Um, <laughs> I found like so many people like have heard this, but it, okay. it's used as like a buzzword. Um, okay. Really what it means, it's just like where the team's resources are at. So, in this situation, we say, okay, well, we don't know where their jungler is, so he could be okay. anywhere. We see our jungler here, and our top's here, so, like, this is our strong side. Okay. Um, and why that's important is because, like, 99% of the time, as a mid laner who's looking to roam, it's better for you to just roam to the strong side. Right? It's, it's much, much better to capitalize on the strong side than to kind of um, take care of your weak side. Right. Okay. So, I'll write this down as well. Strong side versus weak side. It's basically, I mean, basically just push your right, jungle. Yeah, and then the if you make plays, make it on the strong side. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, no, I mean that's a chess term too. It's similar. Oh, is yeah, it? it. Yep. Okay. Um, if you have most of your resources are pointing in the direction of the opponent's king shouldn't just suddenly start attacking their queen side yeah exactly exactly um very similar idea and, and the way we tell them it's just look at your fucking jungle okay. um 
And then if you watch pro play or, or competitive a lot, you'll hear a lot about like trading sides in the map. And that's mm -hmm. when like the strong sides of the two teams are mirrored and whoever wins that situation is just who wins strong side harder, right? So really, really that's kind of just the, yeah, that, that's roaming 101. Roam wherever your jungler is at. Um, and in that vein, you can take that even deeper as a mid laner and kind of say, okay, our jungler is gonna finish this camp here. We know, you know, do you know when the crabs spawn? These, these little scuttle crabs? That was like round two minutes. I don't know. It's three fifteen. So okay. they they spawn at three fifteen, <laughs> which is um. Two minutes after wave clashes. That's what. Was, that's yeah. What so it, you know, and we'd say, okay, our jungler's coming top. So you can think, you know, are we contesting this crab? Well, let's go top with them and whatever, whatever. Um. Also, I mean, I guess that brings up some basic jungle tracking <laughs> stuff I'm gonna talk about. <laughs> um. Basic jungle tracking and timers. There's kind of three timers that I say are necessary to know as a mid laner until like platinum or diamond where you'll know you'll you'll pick up more by then. But okay. to start, these are the most important. Um 230. Yeah, let me put these on new line and just write out what they are. Okay, so 230 is the first expected gank. First expected gank. Any jungler in the game can gank you. Um, starting at 2.30, which means we have to have some sort of vision down or some sort of jungle tracking down by them. Okay. Um, especially if we have priority. There are some junglers who will gank you earlier, right? We call that a level two gank. Those are your junglers, like uh, really cheesy junglers. The Twitches, the Shakos, um, J4 can do it, Xinjiao can do it. Um, Kane. Go ahead. Kane? Uh, no, no, not really. Kane won't. Level two. Okay. Kane can 230, right? Any jungler can 230, but a level two gank will come on your first wave mid lane. So okay. it's pretty rare. Hmm. Um, so you really only have to worry about it from these junglers. But if Kane's doing that to you, like you're going to win the game. You're playing against okay. a really bad game. <laughs> <Got it. laughs> um, but 230 is super natural for Kane, right? And, and he'll be able to do this. So this is just when there's kind of two situations here. It's either the crossover point for the jungler where they kind of clear their bot side and now they just are coming mid and they whatever or i guess it's more common for them to do that um or whatever or sometimes they do a thing called a three camp where they go buff buff and an xp camp and then they'll look to gank here it's a little right. bit later than 230 but either way we have to have some sort of vision down or we have to just be respecting the gank by that okay in this game it wasn't that big of a problem because we were just fucking under tower the whole game <laughs> right <laughs> um but yeah, so first expected gank, you have to have, have to have some sort of vision down by now. Okay. 3.30, I already talked about this, is when both the crabs spawn. And then 6.50, this is plus or minus a couple of seconds, but this is when their first buff respawns. So if they start okay. red buff, it'll be up plus or minus 5 or 10 seconds, wow. 6.50. So you know they'll be down here if they're, you know, worth their jungle. And this is known as basic for <laughs> she's <laughs> yeah these these are just like these three are enough until you're like platinum and in which okay. case you'll you'll <laughs> want to know more okay. um but yeah these first three and honestly the first two are the most important but this is just a super cheap way to know where the jungler is at at seven minutes for free um so being able to just keep these two things in, or this thing in mind is helpful it's probably the least important of the three if that makes you feel better um <laughs> okay good let's see okay holy I, shit i love that i have this there's so much to look at and i guess i'll work in sections focus on this yeah this yeah game. so <laughs> my goal here is with most clients my goal is to kind of give you a bunch of ideas give you a decent process and say like have fun go on your way um if you know, there's some people who try to get like weekly stuff. In that case, I don't like information bomb, but I, I just assume that I won't see you super quick. So I'm just trying to give you lots of stuff to think about. But yeah, the, the way you approach it is you approach it kind of one idea at a time. Okay. Um, I mean, I probably will maybe do something like this every other week or so. It Depend, okay. depends on my time. If I'm able yeah. to find a way to invest two games a day, then... I'll yeah, that's, that is what I was going to mention. If you can play the game more, that's important. If you can't, just play the game with that time frame you'll okay. learn more uh, okay. after after this kind of base fundamental ideas you'll learn more just playing the game mm -hmm. um okay cooldowns leaning 
strong side, so weak side, basic jungle timers. I have a lot of stuff I want to say about lane phase, and I think I want us to do some quick 1v1s here in a second. Okay. But let me I know make you're sure. a little over here. I'm sorry. No, my sessions are 60 to 90 minutes, actually. So, oh, okay. yeah, we, I, I was planning on going another 20 minutes or so. Gotcha. Um, let's see. They say 60 to 90 minutes, but I usually just go an hour and a half regularly. So. I do the same with chess. <laughs> yeah. I'm enjoying it less than I stick around. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to reward good behavior. So if people like give me VODs or whatever, I'm like, boom, I love it. Or if somebody's being like a good student, I'm like, yes, I love it. Let's, let's go a little bit longer. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I just send you another 45. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, Merc Treads kind of sucks. I mean, these are just some notes I wrote as I saw them. Um, I wanted to talk about pressuring on a vision a little bit. I think I'm going to save this for another day, though. Um, okay. One thing that I noticed is you don't move your camera. You don't actually pan your camera to your jungler or your side lanes, like, at all, which is really bad. So, camera panning, it, it, it's camera pan. Actually, I'm just going to call this information gathering. Okay. Information gathering and camera panning. Yeah, I just got off of the locked screen. Oh, beautiful. Year. I was actually going to mention, uh, actually, I'll, I'll get to it. So okay. information gathering is probably one of the most like fundamental mechanics in League. And it, it is okay. the most common mistake I see from gold and below. Okay. So everybody just needs to get better at this. And if you're going to play Twisted Fate, this is for sure your most important mechanic. Because you just okay. have to see the opportunities. You have to be able to keep track of multiple things at once. You have to be able to push in the side lane and be looking mid lane and whatever, whatever. Um, so the first part of this, which is most of information gathering is just camera panning. And there's two parts. There's, I call it micro camera control. And this is the lock cam, you know, small movements in team fights, um, movements in lane in team fights, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. We're good at this, at least for, for our level, we're actually strong at this. Um, so I think. I could not tell that you just got off lock cam. So what do you mean we're good at this? Like you're good at this. Oh, I see. Okay. Maybe I'll write you. Yeah, maybe I thought you meant like uh, the champions did it. Okay. No, 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 you you are better at this uh, than your level. I think I I couldn't tell that you just got off lock camera. That's very good. Um, your macro camera panning is kind of the bigger camera control to like uh, side lanes and moving to jungle, moving to jungle and side lanes, etc. You suck at this. At this. <laughs> so. We definitely need to work on this. And this is really important for TF. Okay. So I noticed your map awareness is actually okay, which map awareness is part of what goes into um, information gathering, hitting tab and checking items is, is things that go into it. But okay. your map awareness is good. Okay. Um, but you should be using, should be using this as a cue to camera pan. Because if you see like, oh, uh, if you see interaction, pan to it. Because you see things that you don't see on the minimap. You see resources, HP and mana on both teams. You see wave state a lot easier. You see um, cooldown, like major cooldowns. Like if you see a super long cooldown, like a 22, 30 plus second cooldown get used, that's valuable and that may change if the roam is good or not. Right? If you see flash get used, that's even more valuable because that's five minutes of timers that makes your roams more valuable to that person now. <laughs> right? All of this shit that you don't get to see through the minimap, super, super important that you just pan and look. Okay. Um, the biggest thing is resources and wave states. And I guess the way you think about this mechanic is, is you kind of just, you want to flick there and come right back. Like it should be really quick and snappy. Okay. Um, quick and snappy. Even if you do it really, really quick, your brain will catch up. Like, have you ever watched Faker's point of view? And you just kind of like... Oh my gosh, it's like... Yeah, it like makes you sick almost. It's just like everywhere, all the time. It's ridiculous. Yeah, when um, you were mentioning um, uh, use the F keys more, I'm like, oh, that's going to hurt my eyes. <laughs> yeah, right. And so that's kind of what um, I, I was okay. getting at that. Ideally, you, you use F keys to do this because that's like okay. technically faster. You don't have to move your mouse so much, whatever. Um, you don't have to. There are plenty of players who don't. So... It's an ideal thing, but if you don't feel like kind of Is practicing the mechanics, lag it a little bit, like where it's not so. <laughs> um, no. I guess to it. Okay. Yeah, you, you will get used to it. And if, okay. if you kind of just F key and spacebar right back, 
Mm -hmm. It may not seem like you can get the information, but you'll get enough and you'll be able to see enough. So, okay. Um, it, no, I just, just like getting off a lock camera, I guess. Yeah, no, there's, I'm trying to think of a way to approach this. I, I was going to mention, um, it's definitely not necessary, but okay. I think it's kind of beautiful. I, I did want to say that. That's kind of a personal thing. I, I think it's beautiful League of Legends when you see somebody who just kind of, you know, throws his F keys around and the dude sees everything and, you know, you know everything. Um, and some people use F key alternatives. Like they don't use the actual F keys if that's uncomfortable right. for you. But I have big hands, so it's never been an issue for me. <laughs> um, but you can use like Z, X, C, V is common. You can use a modifier key like shift and then one, two, three, four, five, whatever, but whatever. Okay. Um, otherwise, yeah, you just click on your mini map and it does the same thing. And that's okay. a little bit slower. So right. that may look better to you. Perfectly fine. Just, you have to do it. Like, I, I don't care how you do it. You just have to do it. Got it. Um, Especially as specific. Okay. Yeah. So that's probably the biggest mechanic that you need to get better at is right. just the camera panning part of this. Right. Um. Because yeah, you actually look at your minimap a surprising amount and your micro camera control, I think is pretty good. Um, but your camera panning is pretty much non-existent. Okay. And this will change, like the more opportunity you look for with your camera, the more you will see. You will see very obvious roam opportunities if you just move your camera. Like okay, you will I'm be surprised. Um, I'm not fully understanding the, the second one, macro panning. Yeah, this is the... This is what we're talking about. The moving your camera from to the other places. Overall. Oh, I see. Okay. Just getting yeah. the picture the on screen. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Got it. Okay. The micro stuff is just the small like mouse adjustments. Okay. The second part is what I've been talking about this whole time. That moving gotcha. your camera to bot lane. <laughs> and this is just kind of, you know, I, I kind of put these in air quotes. When I talk about them because it's, it's just kind of a rough way to think about it. Okay. Um, but it, I, I use these more as like, this is the smaller kind of, the smaller camera movements is the bigger informational camera movements. Gotcha. Um, and I even write that usually bigger, <laughs> smaller. Um, yeah. So, whatever. Okay. It looks kind of ugly right now. But that's what. <laughs> it's fine. I do this. Um, okay. Information gathering, camera panning, basic jungle timers. Okay. So we got quite a few fundamentals to work on. In yeah. terms of stuff to work on, I'm even gonna write down, uh, look at pro builds if you ever wanna see meta, like what people are I doing. Mean, Yo! It is what it is. Thanks. Oh, I appreciate it. Of course, Big I'm doing tips. that as a thank you. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate it, that's huge. Um. Oh my I, goodness, uh... now I'm flustered. <laughs> my chest lessons are at uh, 75 an hour and you're going above oh wow yeah, that's that's huge thank you yeah i appreciate it man yeah i'm young i'm just i'm starting I, i've only been coaching for like a year and a half two years now so i'm, I'm trying to mm -hmm. and i'm like the lowest I, i'm young too so i'm trying to build up to it but i appreciate it man yeah no, you're doing a great job thank you um yeah look at pro builds if you ever want to see meta runes plus builds um it's super simple just to never build the wrong thing ever again if you want to experiment with builds, like I know you do, that's fine. Just keep it to normals. <laughs> and this will facilitate... The problem with different builds and runes is, first of all, they're probably not optimal because if they were... Um, if they were, you would probably see them more often. Second of all, it shifts your identity, right? Oh, and champion identity was... That's the fucking biggest thing. This is, this is the whole game. Champion identity is the biggest thing I want to talk about. Okay. No way, this is the same chess caller from YouTube? Wait, you have a YouTube I'm, channel? I'm curious too. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I, I do chess, that's all. <laughs> wait. I, I, this is your stream though. Wait, are you famous? Wait, hold up. I have to see if you're famous. I'm not famous. Is this you? It's one word, chess scholar. Uh oh. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, I've been trying to like, figure out YouTube. Yeah, I'm not famous at all. Okay, yeah. Thanks. But I do uh, a lot of chess stuff. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, that's sick. <laughs> that's beautiful i love that <laughs> holy shit that gets a like <laughs> that's so funny yeah y'all y'all go check out his youtube that's actually super cool um yeah this dude's huge dude he just tipped me 25 bucks for a lesson that's that's huge yeah um okay so 
Let's see. I know this is a lot, and information dumping is not great. But champion identity. I, I didn't have anything before this. I just had YouTube yeah. videos and. So these so. are the fundamental ideas that I kind of want you to start thinking about. I'm gonna give you some concrete plans in a second. Um, but again, it looked like we were kind of directionalist, so I'm just trying to give you an idea of what the game should, what the game is really. Okay. Um, it's a lot about cooldowns. It's a lot about wave state and the amount of space you take up. Um, so you kind of want to use your cooldowns to leverage wave state or some sort of advantage. Mm -hmm. um, okay, champion identity. Most important thing for climbing. Um, and what this means is, it, it really just means knowing your role, knowing your role within each situation. Right. So... In, like, for example, for this champion, it would be like, we can't front to back. We want to side lane. We want to flank. These are all identity things of your champion that you can kind of look at a fight and say, well, you know, I was, my team was here and their team was here. And, you know, if you are anywhere here in this kind of blue rectangle, it's bad because of your champion, not because it's a bad fundamental, right? Um, where if you kind of flank in like this, that fits your champion better. That's more to your identity. That's more doing your job, right? Mm -hmm. Um, did I do my job is a huge question. So, Hugh? Okay. So, so, would taking demolish be one of those things too or no? Uh, it think? definitely can be if you take green secondary. It, TFs definitely used to do that a lot. Okay. But if you're going electrocute, Usually you want to take light blue secondary so you can get time warp tonic so you can start C pod <clears throat> so you can use so you can trade more aggressively effectively. Okay. Um TF is really good at kind of trading his resources down because you'll get in a lot of auto attacks and a lot of damage with C pot and you'll have lots of more like uh effective health. Mm -hmm. So And he gets it back with blue card. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So you basically just want to run down their resources. Okay. Um, even if you can't kill them. So just by default, I would go Electrocute first and then Time Warp Tonic second. And then all the other runes are kind of preference in between there, but those are like the fundamental ones, I think. Mm -hmm. um, okay, and the most important thing about Champion Identity is it gives us perspective for what a good and bad play is. Perspective. Right, so this is important because there's so many plays in league and there's so many roam opportunities and there's so much shit going on that it's very hard to kind of discern when you look back at your own game and be like, was this good or bad? The way you know if it's good or bad is you kind of ask yourself, was it within my duties, right? Did I, was it my job to take control of this, right? The, the example I use is uh, I'll coach ADC players and they'll have teammates that don't engage for them. And so they think they'll have to engage themselves and then they'll die. And they'll be like, well, I can't play the game anyways. We're going to just lose. And it's like, well, it's not your job to engage. You're <laughs> going to lose to teammates sometimes. It's part of league, it's part of a team game where you have solo queue teammates. But it doesn't mean you could stop doing your job because now you're not playing your role correctly and now you're, it's not as valuable of a game anymore. Right. Or uh, yeah. supports. I'm sorry, go ahead. Sorry, I love this example as well. Support sometimes will be like, my fucking laners won't get prio, so I can't get vision. So they'll go try to get vision, they'll walk to the river, and they'll die. And they're like, oh, no, like that's your fault because it's not your job to get vision without priority, right? <laughs> so you can't do that, right? So this champion identity part is big. All right, what okay. were you, you going to mention? Uh, I think one of the issues too is that because I was doing these Mimi builds, sure, uh, I was getting very caught up on being the guy who engages yeah uh, yeah and it's, it's very confusing people. right all that I'm trying to switch back and then it's like oh <laughs> <laughs> all the other builds kind of muddle our own understanding of our champion identity because a different build shifts your identity um okay. so yeah i would definitely keep that kind of more controlled and, and more to normals in terms okay. of actually climbing it Effectively, what you're doing with all these different builds and stuff is you're playing like 20 different champions, right? So yeah, that's, we know that's, that's not a good thing. Well, that's kind <laughs> of what you're doing. So stick to normal TF or one form of TF. It doesn't even have to be normal TF. Just stick to one form of TF you really like uh, okay. to climb with. And then in normals or, or on the second account or in fuck you, mm -hmm. do whatever the fuck you want. Play any of the champions you want. 
but stick to one or two identities for okay. finding the cringe bow is really fun it's hard to explain it's really easy yeah that is interesting that is interesting i haven't seen that either so i think you could definitely try that out some more um okay. in terms of climbing i think electric will be the easiest for you but yeah like if, if you want to be like a cringe bow tf1 trick like we can definitely work on that all of the fundamentals are the exact same okay um, I'll, I'll, I'll put a focus on the fundamentals with normal builds and once i get the fundamentals down i'll start yeah it. okay yeah and all the fundamentals are the same so yeah once once you want to try that or whatever it is yeah it is easy once you understand the game like trying different openings and chests. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah, it, yeah. <laughs> oh man i love the chess analogies yeah oh, man the other chess analogy i love is early game is so important if you are super good at lane phase mm -hmm. you will just cruise through the ranks um actually uh it's kind of the opposite in chess though end game is more important in my experience i always got caught up on just not learning the opening so i never got past 900 gotcha. i never learned a single opening because i like refused okay so i guess the the similarity is where if you have a very good opening you're ahead for the rest of the game when the whole game gets easy assuming so, that yeah yeah okay I, so, get, I get your point you're right yeah you're develop right. a very strong opening and that's the beginning to climb here. so right. <laughs> these are the fundamental ideas um in terms of things to work on right away um and usually i call these learning objectives i like to kind of order these um a big part of it will be working on hmm what's a good actionable way to phrase this so this game we kind of just gave up all of lane phase and we didn't contest anything so the very first step is going to be this is a what a good like frame shot i'm actually glad it was uh, a tough champ to face like you got to really see what happens when I'm getting slammed. Yeah, yeah. So that, that again, that's that's some of the beauty of it. You know, I came out of this excited knowing there's gonna be a lot to talk about. But it looks like we didn't try to do anything. So the first thing I'm gonna do is say like contest, contest or like work to win lane. Right. So that is a fundamental learning objective that I think is very important. Winning lane is like step one. Um. So this means don't give stuff for free. So, you know, if he... You want this minion, you got to pay for exactly, it. Exactly, right? If he spends resources, or if he spends cooldowns, actually resources better work, resources on the wave, don't just give it to him. Retaliate and spend on him. Right? That's a very common thing where, like, somebody will kind of crash the wave and get prio, but they'll be down 50% HP now. Right. um so don't give stuff for free um work on like cooldown efficiency like this goes into this don't get hit like don't let yourself and the wave get hit and work to utilize your spells well um efficiency what's up it's just funny in melee we had a a guy who was like prodigy and his famous phrase was don't get hit that's how you get good yeah exactly right don't get hit <laughs> or if you do get hit make sure not everything's getting hit um okay. It, it's okay to get hit sometimes like against aries this is the most common thing where like ari is a champion that i find a lot of people struggle with and it's because they just stand on the wave because they don't want to get charmed and then ari just throws a q at it and then ari hits them in the wave and then like they're down hp and they're down prio and they're like why did i lose <laughs> like because you got hit like <laughs> stop getting hit by so many things all the time okay um, yeah so a lot of that's cooldown efficiency and it goes both ways right hit more things mm -hmm. um don't get hit hit more things don't give stuff for free um like i mean some things i didn't get to see because we didn't have prior this game but like look to make plays with jungle mm -hmm. um look to ward when you have timers take good backs all of these things each of these are individual learning objectives and i only got to see you play one game so yeah. i didn't get to you know i don't see the common denominator but i'm kind of giving you the framework to see the co common denominator i'm not sure if you're really good or really bad at any one of these 
But you can look at your own game and say, were my cooldowns efficient? Did I take good backs? Whatever, whatever. If you notice that one of these things you're commonly misplaying on, then boom, that's your learning objective until, you know, the next 20, 10, 15 yeah. minutes, whatever. A big aha moment was when you mentioned the jungle having. Yeah, block. yeah, and kind of that, just that playing like, on. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's that's such a cheat code, too, because, like, a lot of people don't know where to roam. It's like, just look at your jungle, man. Yeah, that's cool. Um, Yeah, and that's going to be another part. Learning objectives will just be jungle tracking plus... Mm -hmm. Uh, that's the word I use. Oh, timers. So yeah, the 230 stuff, 315, um, 650, getting good wards, right? Warding on the chickens. Knowing where your jungle is is super important and, and kind of playing around it. And playing around it. Um, in terms of micro, the biggest things we have to work on is camera panning, right? Again, ideally with F keys, but it doesn't matter. It's fucking move your camera. <laughs> right um leaning i guess that's not really micro that's i'll put this down here leaning on the right side when you can that's it's that doesn't have any sub points that's just it is what it is um spell like cooldown efficiency can be micro but oftentimes it's macro but just make sure like hit your spells okay um and, yeah. yeah yeah right if you're yeah, casting it on the wave yeah now that you know that if you're casting your spell and you want to hit the whole wave just hit the whole wave now it should be a micro problem now that you're aware yeah. of it <laughs> okay. um so yeah hit your spells on the things you're trying to hit them on um you know dodge skill shots whatever yeah. these are just things that you can keep getting better at okay um and then keep getting better at your kind of champion identity stuff mm -hmm. always be asking what is my job and did i do my job that is this one question if you're a deep enough thinker is enough to get you to climb to, to platinum or diamond so okay this is huge yeah i when i first uh the two years ago when the where i was playing a lot mm -hmm. um I understood the identity of Twisted Fate, at least at the time, was sure. split push hard. Yeah, yep. And the problem was I would be, uh, what's it called, tunnel visioning into split pushing and not looking around to make other plays. Yeah. So, so. I think a, a better way to phrase that would be, at the time and, and even now, is out rotate hard. And the easiest way to do that is to split push first. And then as soon as, you know, they deny all this stuff mid and they have a really good flank opportunity mid, or you deny all this stuff in the side lane and you have a really good flank opportunity mid, take it, or they come to you and now you have somebody down here and you get to create a man advantage anywhere you want on the map. So okay. the idea is solid, but split pushing is a tool to help you do your job. Your job isn't split pushing. That's like, uh, that's like a Trindamere, like a, or, or a Fiora's job is a split push. Okay. and break towers you're not a tower breaker you're an out rotator got it um, okay 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 that makes sense yeah and here i might even write, write that we're an now out rotator make them respond to us and move around them to create man advantages and good positioning which good positioning for us is good flanks good flanks good you know yellow cards on their back line or good yellow cards yeah. on somebody we can just one shot right or mm -hmm. set up a one shot on yeah i try to make sure my e is procs before i uh try to go gank i think i was just very nervous right and talking at the same time so yeah, all yeah. That. it definitely it happened and that's why I, and especially with how like chaotic league is i don't care if people win or lose it's just like i, I just wanted to see kind of your thought process yeah and I think we got some good stuff out of it this time. Yeah, you're, you're only as good as your worst day, I think. <laughs> yeah, it, you, got, you got to see a lot of yeah. things. Um, Beautiful list. Whoa. <laughs> okay, yeah, we got some good stuff. So the fundamental ideas, this is kind of for you to look back on and, and ideas to think about. These are fundamental aspects of the game that apply even at the highest level. So just keep mastering these. Learning objectives are concrete things that I kind of will look back at these next time we talk. Okay. Um, and kind of the first things that I want you to kind of start thinking about.
Okay. Um, and these are just the notes I took. I would ignore these unless you're just curious what I was thinking while I was watching you. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, otherwise, my, my goal is not like a specific rank. It's just having okay. a good foundation of the game. Yeah. Um, even if it means like maybe someday I want to play a different champ, I want to make sure I'm playing it on yeah. Foundation. Yep. And playing one champion is a great way to learn the fundamentals because you don't have to worry about you're not spending a mental stack wondering what your spells do or what the cooldowns are, or how you hit the combo right. So playing one champion is the best way to learn the fundamentals. So like beautiful stuff. Um, this is all I got though, man. So if you have any questions or anything, we can go through those. But otherwise, I probably have questions over the week. <laughs> okay, yeah, feel free to DM me too. I might DM okay. those open or on stream or whatever. Oof. Otherwise, yeah, I think that was a loaded session. So, oh yeah, it was a bit much, but yeah, these are the the stuff. I would just go down this list to start, and okay. then you can kind of look back at it, and then yeah. we will upload this to YouTube. So if you want to look back at the video, or whatever, I'll ping you when that's Thank up. You. Yeah, absolutely. But um, oh, that's all I got, man, dude. I appreciate it. Appreciate the tip and everything. Let yeah, me, of course, man. Hey, send these to you for. I've always uh, I've been there. <laughs> yeah, I I appreciate that. That's awesome, and yeah. I think coaches are the best students, or at least good coaches. Like, I um, I get a lot. I like people don't expect me to get coaching. But I get coaching a lot of things I do right, and it's just it's so much fun to coach a coach. Mhm. Mm at least a good one. Okay. Okay. Got to with them. Oh boy. Who is? Uh, one of my friends on League. Oh, oh, good luck, man. You got some good stuff to work on. Uh oh. All right, beautiful <laughs> stuff, dude. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you, like, Matt. Platinum. Platinum diamond. Players. Oh, you're gonna show them up now. You're gonna show them up. You're ready. You're ready. You're gonna be like, that was an inefficient cue. You should. <laughs> like, it's gonna be beautiful. All right, good luck, man. I really appreciate it. Nice to meet you, man. Have a blessed it's night. Great to meet you too. Yeah, and, I'll see you um, around. I'll let you know if. Uh, I'll let you know how it's going. Yeah, sounds good, dude. Keep me posted. Cheers, good luck dude. With the rest of your stream. Good luck. Thank you so much. Peace.